Magandang araw po muli. Magandang araw sa aming mga tagapakinig, sa aming mga classmate. Magandang araw, Doc. So, ang ating pong topic uli ay ang sweat or blood. Number 9 na po tayo. So, how to eat? Napakailaga po nito kasi yan yung nagiging blood. Understand that food is both a pleasure and a fuel and treat. It's as such. Overeating, eating too fast, preoccupation while eating, or eating at irregular times create stress on spleen. You can support your spleen by. So yun, napakalaga po ha. Kaya di ba ngayon, usong-uso yung habang kumakain, nanonood, katabi yung cellphone. So nakakasira po yun ng energy ng spleen. So habang kumakain po dapat ganito. Enjoying your food. Yon, habang kumakain, dapat hindi rin nag-uusap ng tungkol sa problema. Hindi po yon. Having regular meals in a calm environment. So, yun talagang peaceful po yung ano ninyo. Kahit yun sa kusina ninyo. Eating away from stresses or distraction. Tapos pag kumakain po tayo, dapat dahan-dahan lang. Hindi yung subo ng subo na halos hindi na humihinga. Eating until you're about 80% full. Yan. Yung mabusog po tayo, hindi naman sobrang busog. Tapos kailangan po planning meals. So healthy food po yung dapat inihahanda natin. Eating a variety of foods. So yung iba-iba pong klase ng ano, gulay, prutas, yan. Everyday po dapat nakakain natin yan. So ano po yung dapat natin kainin? <laughs> Dito po may naka ano, no? too much unity. So dapat uh, unity and variety. Yun yung balance dapat. Too much variety. So, try to keep a balance. So, ensure not to eat too much of any one food. Halimbawa, puro lang naman ang kinakain mo eh. Di ba sa Bisaya, maraming mais. Puro lang mais. Dapat may iba pa siyang halong kinakain ka. Too much meat will weaken spleen and will be unable to digest. May mga ganun tao, gusto na lang ulam lagi. Karne, araw-araw. So, Too many grains can create dampness. So kung puro naman na gulay na yung halimbawa yung mga buto-buto, araw-araw din isang linggo, magkikreate po ito ng dampness. So kailangan po yung variety and balance are the key. So try to include, halimbawa po itong whole grains. Pag vegetable naman po, pwede pong in-steam ninyo or in soup or pwede nating i-bake or lightly suited. So hindi po masyadong ginisa ng sobrang oil. So, pwede po to twice a day. Huwag po tayong kumakain ng mga raw foods. Yun. Ang naalala ko po yung mga raw foods, minsan uso dito sa amin yung jumping salad. Hindi po siya, ano kasi minsan yung mga kumakain nun, kung hindi naluto, at yung halimbawa yung jumping salad po, yung mga hipon na maliliit, post po ito minsan yung pagtatae. So, kailangan po yung good quality sources of protein. Tulad po ng beans, yan, yung mga monggo, eggs or meat. So napakaganda po kung may mga sariling tanim eh kasi sure na walang mga pesticides. Increases food that are warm. Build blood and support the spleen. So avoid foods that are cold, raw or damp. Makikita natin ano ba ba yung mga cold or raw or damp na food. Next slide po. So ito. Food and supplements that build blood. Ito yung mga Malusog sa ating katawan upang maging dugo. So, tulad po ng eggs, beef, chicken, liver fay, sea vegetables, seeds and nuts, beets, pumpkins, sweet potato, carrots. Dito po sa amin napakaraming ano, yung seaweeds. Leafy greens, oatmeal. So, yung brown rice. Yun, healthy food po yan, brown rice. Ito pong... Uh, ano bang, ano dyan? Quinoa. So, niresearch ko po siya. Ito po ay isang klase ng grains. Start to seeds po ito. Tinatawag nila itong mother of all grains. So, sa ibang bansa po ito. Beans. Tapos yung beans po combined with a grain. Yung spirulina din po. Blue green algae. May nabibili nito. Yung mga nakakapsul na. Nutrial, nutritional yeast. Ganun din po yung mga iron taken with vitamin C for better absorption. Yung iron, marami pong gulay sa atin na maraming iron ano. 
Yan. Tapos, samahan natin ng vitamin C para mas mabilis na absorb ng katawan natin. So, yung mga pagkain din na maraming vitamin C tulad nung mangga, marami rin vitamin C yan. Tapos, yung B12. So, yun po yung mga kailangan upang maging healthy ang ating blood. Ito naman po yung mga pagkain na nagiging cause ng dump. Dump foods and excess. Ayan, pag, kumakain, pag umiinom po tayo ng mga alkohol, napoproduce yan ng dump sa ating katawan. Yung mga greasy, heavy, or oily foods. Ayan po, nakita po natin na no, sa, sa mga resto po, pag kumakain tayo, yung pipiliin po natin kasi napakarami dyang greasy. Saka oily foods. Dairy products. Ayan, refined carbohydrates. Tulad po ng sugar or yung white flour na nabibili natin. Tapos yung iba din pong grains. Ganon din po yung tofu at soy milk. So, nagpo-produce po siya ng dump. Pa, ito naman po yung mga cold foods. Naku, ngayon masarap to kasi tag-init. <laughs> Ice drinks. Pero yun nga, nagpo-produce na ng, ano, ng cold ano. Beer. Ice cream. Raw fruits and vegetables. Okay, so, yun po yung mga food na dapat natin piliin at iwasan. Thank you very much, Ma'am Mildred. <clears throat> Punta na tayo ngayon sa tongue diagnosis. We have Ma'am Teresita Sumile. Good afternoon po, Ma'am Teresita. Hello, Ma'am Teresita. Hello po, Doc. Sorry na hindi ko na-mute. <laughs> hindi ko na-unmute ang microphone ko. Um, good afternoon, Dr. Hector and classmates. Um, welcome to Tongue Diagnosis. And now let's talk about pale tongues with a depression at the root. With the help of the eight principles and tongue diagnosis, Acute and chronic patterns of disease can be analyzed quite accurately. Tongue diagnosis is used to gain insight into the energetic present condition of the individual. There, there are also tongue signs that inform us about the person's energetic past. These signs include deep cracks, dents, hollows, or crevices in the tongue body or a contracted tongue body. These and other changes to the tongue body, shape, and color, plus other specific signs, are most commonly caused by deep energetic deficiencies. For example, a chronic deficiency of spleen and stomach chi or kidney yin. Generally speaking, these deficiencies will, over time, lead to a depletion or insufficient nourishment of the essence. Essence is a very rarefied and dense form of energy that is fluid in nature. It has the potential of building and nourishing the body. It supplies energetic material for physical and mental development in childhood and for the development of function of the reproductive system. Quality and strength of essence is of great importance in the production of marrow and in controlling the functions of the brain, bone marrow, and spinal cord. Increased output of essence is required to offset the shock and trauma associated with accidents. If one follows a regular lifestyle, the essence will increase decrease slowly and gradually decline in old age, accompanied by loss of acute hearing or loose or falling teeth. Young or middle-aged individuals may also show signs of weakening essence. The most common causes are the following. Chronic inadequate nutrition, yung palaging kumakain ng ah, hindi ng unnutritious foods plus uh, excessive drinking of liquor na yun po, it leads to weakening of essence. And then, 
chronic overwork, yung sobra sa trabaho, kahit pagod na trabaho pa rin. And then, chronic lack of sleep. Uh, dapat matutulog tayo ng 7 to 8 hours. Pero yung iba, dahil sa sobrang busy at dahil sa ambisyon nila, so minsan matulog lang ng 5 or 4 hours a day. Okay? Then, too many pregnancies and births. And births that follow too closely together. Yung mga nanay na maraming anak at sunod-sunod pa ang panganak, usually, uh, sometimes, every year, mga nganak, so yun, mahina din ang essence natin. Okay? Then, excessive loss of sperm. Ito ay para sa yung mga lalaki na over ang sexual activity nila. Then, extremely profuse and frequent menstrual bleeding. Serious chronic illnesses. Frequent colds and flu. Serious shocks. Yung sometimes may makaranas na accident or may makaranas na binabaril sa harapan nila. So, yun. Big ano yun. Maka factor yun na maka weaken ng essence. And then, Many operations, tulad nung kaibigan ko na tatlong beses siya inoperahan. So, yun din po. Constitutional weakness that is inherited weakness of physical and mental disabilities. Diets that are inappropriate to the season. Halimbawa, si Ma'am Vina doon sa Baguio, malamig ang lugar nila. So, dapat uh, kumakain din ng warm foods. Hindi palagiin yung cold foods. Okay? Then, irregular eating habits often in conjunction with overwork. Then, insufficient rest after operations, infections, or other illnesses. Now, let's go to our patient, female, 35 years old. Tongue description, as we can see in the tongue picture, it is slightly pale, slightly swollen, and slight depression at the root. Symptoms? Exhaustion, insomnia, heavy feeling in the legs, tendency to catch colds and coughing. Western diagnosis, monoculiosis, chronic fatigue syndrome following influenza. Background to disease, chronic overwork. PCM diagnosis, spleen and lung chi deficiency, and slight deficiency of essence. Spleen and young lung chi deficiency is due to chronic overwork, causing the patient suffered from heavy feeling in the legs, tendency to catch colds and coughing, with, which is reflected in a slightly pale and swollen tongue body shape. Then slight deficiency of essence, still due to chronic overwork, causing the patient suffering from exhaustion and insomnia. And this is reflected in slight depression at the root of the tongue. Yan lang po. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much, Ma'am Teresita. We now proceed to diagnosis by interrogation. And we call straight from Baguio, Ma'am Vina Pasqua. Good afternoon, Ma'am Vina. Good afternoon po, Doctor. Good afternoon po sa lahat. So, karugtong po ito yung kahapon, mental emotional symptoms, day 7 po, sa fear on anxiety 2 pa rin po. Uh, dito nakikita natin yung empty. Um, ang patterns po ay heart blood deficiency, mild anxiety, insomnia, palpitations. Pag heart yung deficiency po, anxiety that is worse in the evening palpitations, at saka nagkakaroon po ng pagpapawis sa gabi. Then, liver blood deficiency, mild anxiety, depression, insomnia. Pag liver yung deficiency naman, mild anxiety, depression, insomnia. Uh, yung tang po walang coating. Then, kidney yung deficiency, anxiety that is worse in the evening. Lack of willpower, dizziness, and tinnitus. Deficiency of chi of the heart and gallbladder. Uh, ito po ay, ang manifestation po ay mild anxiety, insomnia, at saka uh, timidity. Pag full naman po, heart fire, uh, severe anxiety na po yan, may palpitation, ang kulay po ng dila ay red na may coating. 
pag heart blood stasis naman, uh, matindi na po yung kanyang anxiety, palpitations, at ang kanyang dila ay purple na ang kulay. Pag flame fire, harassing the mind, severe anxiety, manic behavior, at saka solen po ang kanyang dila. Sa liver cheese stagnation naman, anxiety, depression, irritability, hypochondrial distension. Sa liver fire, severe anxiety, headache, thirst, red ang kulay ng dila, at ang pulso ay wiry. Liver yang rising, anxiety, headache, at saka dizziness. Rebellious chi of the penetrating vessel, anxiety, panicky feeling, up uh, yung nakakaramdam po ng constriction sa ganyang lalamunan, palpitations, tightness of the chest, abdominal fullness, firm po ang kanyang pulso, diagra uh, diaphragm heat, anxiety and feeling of uh, stuffiness in the region under the heart following an invasion of wind heat. Sa full at saka sa empty naman, kidney and heart yin deficiency with heart empty heat Nakakaramdam ng patient ng anxiety that is worse in the evening, dizziness, tinnitus, and palpitation. Pag heart gene deficiency with empty heat naman, anxiety that is worse in the evening, palpitation, uh, red tongue, pero walang coating. Meron pong case history dito. A 39-year-old woman had been suffering from panic attacks for the past six years. Pag nagkakaroon po ng attack, ang kanyang lalamunan would become tense at nakakaramdam siya na parang hindi siya maka, makalunok. Become, became slightly breathless, had palpitations, at uh, nakakaramdam po ng init. They occurred every day and became worse pagkatapos niyang kumain ng lunch. It was interesting to note that when the patient was describing yung attack, uh, Ulit-ulit po niyang sinasabi yung word na throat o kaya yung lalamunan. The patient also mentioned, mentioned that she suffered from a night sweats. Yung problema rin po niya ang kanyang periods but she did become aggressively premenstrually. The, uh, the tongue body was swollen slightly without coating on the root at a very slightly red naman so, sa sides at saka yung sa tip. Ang pulso po niya ay mahina in the left rear position and overflowing naman sa kanyang left front position. So yan lang po. Thank you, doctor. Thank you sa lahat. Thank you, Ma'am Vina. Thank you very much. Next, we go to uh, pulse diagnosis. Let's call again on Ma'am Mildred. Good afternoon, Ma'am Mildred. Good afternoon po. Pagpapatuloy po natin ang ating pag-aaral. Magandang araw sa lahat. Number 19 na po tayo, Pulse Qualities. The pulse rate. Chinese doctors traditionally measure the speed of the pulse by counting the numbers of pulses in relation to their, to their own respiration. Yung pag -inga po, ano? This was before the invention of watches with the second hand. So nung wala pang ano, Wala pa talagang relo. So yung pag lang. A simpler and more re reliable method of counting the numbers of beats per minute is to count the number of beats in a period of 15 seconds and multiply this number by 4. So it is good idea to repeat this me measurement a couple of times. As the rate can vary, if there is a vibration, this will in itself have the diagnostic significance. It is important to note that the speed of the pulse diminishes with age. So, yun, kung may edad na, medyo bumabagal po yung pulse. The average speed of the pulse in various age groups is as follows. So, tingnan po natin. So, yun. Pag age 1 to 4 years old po, ang beats per minute, 90 plus. So, yun po yung normal. Pag 4 years old to 10 years old, ay 84 po beats per minute. So, isang minuto. So, yun yung normal. 10 to 16 years old, 80 beats per minute. 
pag 16 to 35 years old ay 76 bits per minute. Yun. 35 to 50, 70 bits per minute. One, sa, ano po yung minute po yung ating susukatan na. 50 plus ang normal pong rate ay 68 bits per minute. So, kailangan po itong sauluhin para alam natin kung normal. So, a rapid pulse is defined as a pulse where the bits per minute exceed the pulse rate that you would expect for someone at that age. So, this means that the pulse rate of 84 bits per minute is normal for a child under the age of 10, but fast for a woman of 60. So, the faster the pulse, the more heat there is. So, alam na po natin, pag mabilis, init. If the pulse is slower than the average, it can indicate cold or lack of yang. People who work out and train hard physically usually have a slow pulse. So, kailangan po natin i-consider na maraming tao, maybe many people to be normal. So, so, if this individual have a normal speed pulse, it is in reality a rapid pulse. Others, my, others myself included, sabi ng author, disagree with this point of view. The slow pulse rate and people who train and play a lot of sport of work out may well reflect that they have damaged their young through excessive physical exertion. And their languid pulse, in fact, a true re reflection of their, of their physiology. So the strength of pulse will determine whether it is C or excess or so or deficient condition. So a situation in which the pulse is not fast even though there is heat present. So the person trains hard or is very physically active. So hindi po yan nagiging fast yung kanya. Pulse. The person takes medicine. Kaya po yun yung mga ikukonsider ano, yung old age, yung may damp heat, may damp phlegm. Mixed pattern where uh, there is a both heat and cold simultaneously or where there is also she deficient or young deficient. The person ha, ha, has both kidney yin shoe and kidney yang shoe. Yung may true cold or pulse heat. So yun po yung mga hindi nagpapasang pulse. The pulse strength, yung lakas po ng pulso. In order, in order to determine whether a pulse is weak or full, you must judge how much strength the pulse has. So yung lakas po ng pulso ay nare-determine how much it found against the fingers. So yung fingers natin pag pinatong, yun po yung nagde-determine. A pulse without strength, yung walang lakas, ay nararamdaman lang felt faintly beneath the fingers. Yun, pag pinatong mo yung fingers mo and will disappear with pressure. Pag, pag dinin mo, nawawala. So yun po yung mga empty pulse. Ano. There are several types of pulse that lack strength. Halimbawa yung empty pulse, pag dinin mo, wala na, wala ka nang mararamdaman. Yung weak pulse naman and pain pulse, ganun din po yun. So therefore, kailang po tayo maging careful when you use these terms because they define specific pulse images. It's with its own diagnostic significance. This is why I have capitalized the name of specific pulse. Qualities. If a pulse feels weak and not very palpable, it is better to say that the pulse lack power or strength. So yung pag sobrang hina po, tapos hindi nyo halos makapa. Yung term pong ginamit niya eh. Uh, lack of power and strength. It is important to distinguish between the size of the pulse, example, the width and the depth, and how replete it is. A pulse can quietly easily be large without being replete. Conversely, so you could feel a pulse that is superficial and thin, yet has the strength. Pwedeng ma mababaw siya, manipis, pero may lakas. So this pulse will only be felt strongly in the superficial level. Sa ibabaw lang po siya, no? 
it will feel weaker or non-existent when you push down with the fingers. Pag diinan mo, hindi mo na mararamdaman yung kanyang strength. A pulse with this strength can feel hard, so tense and long. It is strike back against the finger and does not yield when pressed. So kahit i-release mo, nararamdaman mo pa rin. So yun po yung may strength. It lacks softness and piancy. It is important to be aware of where the fingertip of the sensation is felt. So it should be just below the fingertips. Yan, yung fingertips po natin lagi gagamitin na. If a pulse position is weak, while the position is too is full, the strong pulse position can drown out the weaker one. So, Naapektan din po niya. No? Kaya dapat pinapakiramdaman talaga natin maigi. Nasa yung part yung weak. Kasi pwede yung katabi niya ay full. So, Madidetermine mo yun basta ilagay mo sa tama yung iyong mga fingers. <clears throat> the pressure from the full position will be felt on the side of the fingertips. Sa gilid ng inyong finger. Which can therefore give the impression that the pulse position that is weak also feel as it is full. Akala mo, para hindi ka magkakamali na halimbawa yung, ano, yung right lungs is weak, pero yung guan niya, yung spleen sa right is full. Halimbawa may dampness. Dapat nakatapat talaga yung fingers mo doon sa tune para alam mong ang weak ay yung lungs at yung guan niya na spleen ang full. Para wag ka magkamali kasi kung maano po, mararamdaman mo, akala mo rin yung kanyang lungs ay ay strength, may strength, pero wala pala. So a pulse that has too much strength is full generally, indicates a uh, excess condition. So this reflects that there is too much chi present. So pag excess condition, mas marami yung chi na nandun. Or pwede yung pathogens, marami. If a full pulse is felt in a client who has acute illness, so this is good sign. So kung a Acute pa lang ano, then full yung pulse. Ibig sabihin, malakas pa yung chi. The strength of the pulse indicating that the person has strong zeng chi. Which is combating the chi chi. Yung excess condition or yung, yung pathogens. So, yun po yung pagpinatang natin yung pulse at acute pa lang. So, yun po yung mga ibig sabihin nun. Para mas madali yung, ano, yung pang-diagnosis ano do, kaysa sa pulse. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think we need to study it together. No, I was thinking, uh, kasi it's really part and parcel of the examination. You can always start yes. from the bottom. Maraming salamat po, Ma Mildred. Thank you. Then we go now to differential diagnosis. Let's call on Mom Needs. She will talk about lung yin deficiency with empty heat. Good afternoon, Mom Needs. Good afternoon, Doc Hector. Good afternoon, everyone. So, welcome to Artisan Foundations number 191, lung yin deficiency with empty heat. Okay. Um, etiology or mga causes nito yung hereditary weakness, poor posture, constricting breath. So, kailangan maganda yung posture. Exterior attack of wind, cold, or and wind heat. Okay? Prolonged grief, emotions, or sadness, weakening the lung chi. External and or internally generated dryness, etiological factors leading to kidney and or stomach yin deficiency. Okay? Sign and symptoms, dry cough or scanty, sticky sputum, maybe blood pinched. So, titingnan din yung uh, dinura, baka mamaya may blood. Okay, dry mouth and or throat at night, weak or hoarse voice, thicky, thickly throat, night sweating, tiredness, malar flush, Dislike of speaking, ayaw magsalita, feeling of heat, init na init, and uh, mayroong low-grade fever sa evening. Five palm heat, thirst with desire to drink in small sips, parang ayaw uminom, kaunti-unti lang. Uh, there's insomnia, there's anxiety, uh, mapayat, thin body, and 
thin chest. Okay? When you palpate a patient uh, pulse with this kind of pattern, it can be floating, empty, or rapid. Okay? When you see the tongue, the color is red and it is spilled. Okay? So, treatment principle, moisten lungs, suppress cough, enrich in, descend fire. So, puro hit, ha? Ako pang cure treatment points, lang 9, supplements, lang yin. Bladder 43, supplements, lang yin. DU12 or GV12, clears heat from the lungs. Okay. Kidney 6, supplements, kidney yin, benefits the throat. Spleen 6, supplements, yin. Okay. Then 17 or CV17, supplements, G and Lang yin. Bladder 13 supplements lang chi and yin. Then 4 or CV4 supplements kidney yin. Then 12 or CV12 nourishes stomach fluids. Lang 10 clears lang empty heat. And lang 5 clears upper burner heat. So, kailan alam niyo yung uh, ano ng patient. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, Mom Needs. Very helpful talaga yung diagnostics. Thank you so much. We then proceed to stroke. No? For acupuncture patterns and practice. Stroke is a condition characterized by sudden loss of consciousness hemiplegia, numbness, wry mouth and tongue, and dysphasia or aphasia. Depending on the extent of injury to the brain or meridians, there are two kinds, involving the meridians and not involving the viscera. Stroke develops in a patient when chronic dysfunction of the visceral organs leads to chi deficiency and blood insufficiency. In this state, a number of processes can result in disordered movement of chi and blood, and so this will lead to endogenous wind, fire, phlegm, and blood stasis. Then this will cause blockage of or extravasation of blood from the cerebral vessels. These processes include the following. Excessive fatigue, injuring the interior, Melancholic brooding or excessive rage, dietary overindulgence or overtaxing physical activity leading to blood stasis and blockage, internal accumulation of phlegm and heat, and yang transforming into wind. In all these cases, cerebral vessel blockage or extravasation of blood can lead to coma and partial or total paralysis. Okay. Cumulative deficiency of genuine qi. Senescence may reduce yang qi to as low as half of its normal level. Okay? So, pag medyo hindi na tayo masyadong bat. Chronic illness with a weak constitution also results in deficiency of both qi and blood. So, those people who are who have been sick for quite a long time, no? they are prone to have stroke. Regardless of its cause, Deficient chi loses its motive force for blood circulation. So what happens? The blood becomes stati static and this will form clots. And the clots will block the cerebral vessels. Okay, if you have yin deficiency, madam, the yang becomes hyperactive. So if uh, the yang is hyperactive, magkakaroon po ng endogenous wind. So because of the endogenous wind, this will cause the chi and blood to move abnormally. And this will carry the phlegm and blood clots to attack the orifices. So once the orifices are attacked, there will be, this will now cause a stroke. Next is intemperate diet. Overindulgence in alcohol or fatty and sweet foods or obesity with impairment of chi actions may impair spleen functions. So what happens when the spleen function is impaired? There will be endogenous dampness and phlegm. So this will accumulate. The gelling of phlegm will transform into heat. 
So pag may heat, this will cause the stirring of liver wind. Erratic wind will attack upward and disturbs the channels and meridians, and this will block the orifices, and this will induce a stroke. Injury by passion. So bawal maging too much emotional. No? Unregulated passions. Kaya dapat uh, we have to have acupuncture sessions regularly. Eh, no? This can lead to liver G stagnation and blood stasis in the cerebral vessels. Okay, strong rage can injure the liver and cause sudden hyperactivity of liver yang. So pag uh, malakas po yung, hyper, uh, yung activity ng liver yang, there will be um, blazing of heart fire. Wind and fire, they interact. Okay, magkakonchaba ang wind and fire. You know what happens when the, uh, there's fire tapos may wind pa, no? So this will cause the chi and blood to move erratically. If this erratic movement of chi and blood disturbs the brain, so you will now have the stroke. Next is physical exhaustion. This will lead to impaired regulation of yang chi. This will then rise upward and cause wind to stir. Phlegm and static blood will move upward, carried by ascending chi and fire, and this will disturb the upper orifices. So stroke. Exogenous pathogen. So if you de if you have deficient genuine chi, you know, your upright chi, you are very susceptible to attack by exogenous pathogenic evils. So because of this, uh, this exogenous pathogen will induce the stirring of phlegm and dampness or stagnation of chi and blood by direct attack on the meridian. So in either case, blockage of cerebral vessels may ensue and lead to stroke. The location of a stroke is principally the brain, but this can also affect the heart, liver, spleen, and kidney. The pathological mechanism of stroke falls within the following six categories. So we have deficiency, so yin deficiency or chi deficiency, fire, whether in liver fire or heart fire, wind, liver or exogenous, phlegm with wind or fire, chi, abnormal movement, and blood stasis. Any of them can interact and influence any other. The principal and characteristic features of stroke are loss of consciousness, hemiplegia, numbness, dysphagia or aphasia, wry mouth and tongue. There is also dizziness, headache, vomiting, agitation, convulsion, much sputum, hiccup, incontinence of both urine and feces. Pupils may be dilated or constricted. The tongue may be stiff, wry, or curled. Pwede rin siyang cyanotic, red, or crimson, and may be speckled with petechiae. The tongue coating may be thin and white, white and greasy, yellow, or yellow and greasy. Pulse is mostly taut but may be slippery and thread-like, hesitant, or intermittent. Stroke may be preceded by an aura. Ano itong aura? Pwede dizziness, headache, tinnitus, speech difficulty, or numbness in the limbs. Loss of consciousness. In mild cases, there is mental confusion or somnolence. In severe cases, there is loss of consciousness or coma. Patient may fall into coma from the outset, or may be mentally clear at first but gradually fall into coma with delirium and agitation along the way. Paralysis, whether hemiplegia or paralysis in only one limb. In mild cases, the affected part is merely weak or poorly controlled. But severe cases, there is complete paralysis, often with anesthesia. During the acute phase, the affected limbs are usually flaccid, but a small portion of patients may have chronic or tonic tetany. In later stages, the affected limbs may have stiffness or contracture, especially in the joints of the fingers. Mouth and tongue. This may be wry with deviation toward the side of hemiplegia. This is often accompanied by excessive salivation. So speech. Mild cases, the speech may be slow or slurred with a sensation of stiffness in the tongue. But severe cases, there is aphasia. 
Thank you very much. Next, we proceed to signs and symptoms. Let's call on Mom Teresita Sumile once again to for the presentation. Good afternoon, Mom Teresita. Good afternoon, Olea, Dr. Hector, and classmates. Signs and symptoms of pale palate, dull pale palate. Now let's take our first pale palate. In stomach and spin chi deficiency, the palate is pale that looks like the skin of milk. Then the patient has poor appetite, slight abdominal distension after eating, tiredness, lassitude, pale complexion, weakness of the limbs, loose tools, uncomfortable feeling of the epigastrium, lack of taste sensation, and the tongue is pale and has empty pus. In stomach and skin yang deficiency, the palate is pale that looks almost white. Patient has poor appetite, slight abdominal distension after eating, tiredness, pale complexion, weakness of the limbs, loose tools, uncomfortable feeling of the epigastrium, lack of taste, feeling cold, cold limbs, pale and white tongue with deep, weak pulse. Next is dull pale palate. In spleen and liver blood deficiency, the palate is dull pale. Patient has poor appetite, slight abdominal distension after eating, tiredness, dull pale complexion, weakness of the limbs, loose stools, thin body, scanty periods or amenorrhea, insomnia, dizziness, numbness of limbs, blurred vision, Flutters in the eyes, pale lips, cramps, withered and brittle nails, dry hair and skin, the tongue is pale and dry, and the pulse is choppy or fine. Next is deficiency of chi and blood. In deficiency of chi and blood, the palate is dull pale, with poor appetite, loose stools, weak voice, tiredness, blurred vision, dizziness, numbness or tingling of limbs, palpitations, dull pale complexion, pale tongue and has a weak or choppy pulse. Next is yellow palate. We have chronic stomach and skin chi deficiency. The palate is dull yellow and the patient has poor appetite, slight abdominal distension after eating, tiredness, pale complexion, weakness of the limbs, loose tools, uncomfortable feeling of the epigastrium, lack of taste sensation, the tongue is pale and the pulse is empty. In dampness of the stomach and spleen, the palate is bright yellow and has a feeling of fullness and pain of the epigastrium and lower abdomen, poor appetite, a feeling of heaviness, Thirst without a desire to drink, nausea, loose tools with offensive odor, a feeling of heat, dull yellow complexion, sticky taste, red down with sticky yellow coating, and has slippery rapid pulse. Next is red palate. We have full heat. In full heat, uh, the palate is red because of heat. And then patient uh, has thirst, mouth ulcers, feeling of heat, mental restlessness, red down with yellow coating, overflowing pulse, and other symptoms and signs depend on the organ involved. Next is blood stasis. Uh, the palate in blood stasis is purple. Patient has abdomen, abdominal pain, chest pain, headache, mental restlessness, purple tongue, wiry or choppy pulse, and other symptoms and signs depend on the organ involved, usually liver, lungs, stomach, or heart. 
Yun lang po. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much, Ma'am Teresita. We now proceed to our last but not the least topic. And uh, we will call on Ma'am Vina Pasqua to present it. Good afternoon, Ma'am Vina. Good afternoon po, Doctor. Good afternoon ulit po sa lahat. So, benign prostatic uh, hyperplasia po. Day one, the prostate po. The prostate and benign prostatic hyperplasia in Western medicine. The prostate is a small organ about the size of a walnut. It is situated below the bladder and it surrounds the ureter, urethra. The prostate makes a fluid that becomes part of semen. Prostate problems are common in men older than 50 generally peaking between the age of 60 and 80 years old. The most common prostate problem are acute and chronic prostatitis and benign prostatic hyperplasia. BH, uh, B, BPH is the term used to describe an enlarged prostate. It is common in older men. Over time, an enlarged prostate may block the urethra. So, mahirap po silang umihi. At ang sanhi nito ay uh, it, may, uh, it may cause dribbling after urination on a frequent urge to urinate, especially sa gabi. The etiopathogenesis of BPH remains largely unresolved. However, a hypothesis has been proposed suggesting that uh, ito ay inherited factors and changes in hormone balance, andropose. This testosterone in particular may play a key role in its development. So dito nakikita natin yung prostate, yung, ito yung bladder, yung urita, yung penis, yung testicle, yung bus difference, at saka prostate gland. Po. Yan po yung figure niya sa prostate. Prostate. Ang sabi po ng author, my personal opi uh, opinion is that non-palpalable masses diagnosed by modern tests such as magnetic resonance imaging or MRI, computed uh, tomography, yung CT, or ultrasound scans can and should indeed be treated as disease uh, entities pertaining to the Chinese disease category of abdominal masses. Medical therapy consists of administration and uh, anti-androgens and alpha blockers. In case the results are not satisfactory, so small percentage lang daw cases, or in the presence of neoplasia. Surgical treatment, uh, ito yung prostatectomy, is recommended. Clinical note, uh, sabi again ng author, is that... Uh, Ang personal opinion niya is that non-palpable masses diagnosed by modern medicine can and should indeed be treated as disease in it is pertaining to the Chinese disease category of abdominal masses. In the specific case of benign prostatic hyperplasia such as swelling is indeed palpable but only through a rectal examination. There is no evidence that ancient Chinese doctors carried out such procedures because they never mentioned the prostate. Ito naman yung the prostate in Chinese medicine. Prostate problems were not discussed in ancient Chinese medicine because the prostate itself was not mentioned. Modern Chinese books and journals frequently discuss the treatment of prostatitis and BPH. Although Chinese medicine has a rich tradition in the diagnosis and treatment of gynecological problems, fewer ancient or modern texts are dedicated to the diagnosis and treatment of men's problems. For example, Chinese medicine refers to the uterus in all its classic texts, but no mention is ever made sa prostate. The governing vessel, or dumai, directing vessel, renmai, and penetrating vessel, chongmai, are said to arise in the lower burner and flow through the uterus. But where 
though they flow in men, the classics do not say. So, hindi sinabi. So, the sabi dito, sa clinical note, ancient Chinese medicine books do not mention the prostate. So, dito sa libro, yung uh, spiritual axis, sinabi niya na the directing and penetrating vessel originated from the lower dungeon, so literary bow. The actual term used by the spiritual axis is bow, which is often translated as uterus bow. However, while the term z bow refers to the uterus, the word bow indicates a structure that is common to both men and women. In women, it is the uterus. In men, it is the room of sperm, which could also be translated as room of essence. At, uh, both these structures reside in the lower dungeon and store essence, such as and as the extraordinary vessel originate from here. The, they were closely connected to the essence. So the golden mirror of medicine, sinabi po na yung governing vessel arises within the lower abdomen, externally in the abdomen, internally in the bowel. Also called dungeon in both men and women. In, uh, in women, it is the uterus. In men, it is the room of sperm. So yan po. This classic text therefore states clearly that bow is a structure common to men and women in the former corresponding to the room of sperm or kayai room of essence and the latter to the uterus. The room of sperm is in the lower abdomen, but we do not know the sperm is made in the testicles, seminal uh, vesicles and prostate. So sabi niya, I think it is therefore legitimate to assume that uh, the prostate is a structure that is equivalent to the uterus in women and that uh, the governing vessel, okay, directing vessel and penetrating vessel flow through the prostate. So dito nakikita natin, ito yung bow in men, tapos room for uh, prost room of uching sa prostate, tapos sa women, yung urit ur uterus bow. And then sa men, sperm, and then sa women, uh, Menstrual blood. So, yan po. So, yan lang po. Thank you, doctor. Thank you sa lahat. Thank you very much, Ma'am Vina. So, you may write your questions now on the chat box. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you po sa ating mga presenters. Good afternoon po.